Right, hey, welcome back, guys. Hey, this is episode one of season three, the start of a new season. Can you actually believe it? Hey, I never thought we'd get this far, but we bloody enjoy what we're doing, and we've just hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, so you guys are enjoying it as well. So thank you very much. Now, episode one, season three. We're back where it all started, mate, at the farm in Warrnambool, Victoria. There you go. Anyway, episode one, I would love my lovely wife to be here, and I'd bring you in here and I'd go, Come and I'll show you the squeeze, what are we up to? But she's actually working. She stopped for six weeks and she's working at the base hospital in Warrnambool. So um, she's not in there. I mean, Navi's not there. I've been missing her actually. But anyway, the kids are here. Say good day, kids. Where's your favourite place in Australia? All of them. Uh, all of them. I oh. don't have one. Australia's my favourite place. It is hard to pick, isn't it? It is. Right, so episode one, we're going to stick in Warrnambool for another week. We're just going to move off the farm. We're gonna go into the Surfside Caravan Park. I'm gonna show you a bit about Warrnambool. So when you do come down this way and you finish your Great Ocean Road adventures, then you can park up in Warrnambool and enjoy it. It's a really nice town. It just doesn't have the best weather. It's generally cold and windy, but it's a beautiful town. So we'll show you a bit about it. And then we'll get hoofing into South Australia. And we're gonna catch up with a few people that we'd like you to meet. I'll tell you a bit more about that later. Righto guys. See you farm. See you cows. There it is, mate. Look at that sign. Warrnambool. Check it. All right, hey, we're just rolling in to the caravan park in Warrnambool. Now, it's called um, Surfside, right? <laughs> so I'll show you. Just in here. It's a bloody good park. It, um, it is on a surf beach, which is just over the dune there. Um, but it's massive, mate. There is so much room down here, and generally, it's fairly quiet, apart from Christmas time, right? Christmas time's crazy, but. And last time we went in the other one, and, a, and the boom game, the boom gate went down on our caravan, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, snapped it. Uh, yeah. yeah, actually, that is a funny story. It wasn't that boom gate, though, was it? Was it was a couple of years back in the next park up, they only yeah. opened it up for peak periods, and yeah. we went through, and then had to stop for someone coming, and the boom gate went down in between our car and caravan, and I didn't know. So once old mate moved in front of me, I drove off and clean ripped the boom gate off with the caravan. Yeah, anyway, and it was we pretty embarrassing, don't worry about that. And there's our site. Stick yeah. it up the window. How good's that? Myself. You know what I haven't got? Because my navy's not here. I'm going to have to back in on my own. Do you reckon I can do that, kids? No. Nope. I'll do it. I'll do it. How are we looking, Roo? And just like that, mate, we are set up in Warrnambool. Hey, well done, Rui. High five, brother. No, we don't need mum, do we? No. no. What you doing? Maybe not killing potatoes. <laughs> Last time I cut myself. Did you? Well, be careful. You know what I'm going to turn them into? What? Mashed potato. Yuck. What? I love mashed potatoes. And you're going to have party pies, three veg, and mashed potato. Have a good Well, time. three veg, yuck. And I like party pies. I, I, think you, I think you might be going hungry if everything's so yuck. Get a couple of party pies and um, sausage rolls out. I know it's not the healthiest, but... And then um, a bit of three Mark's veg open. that you put in the mic. And um, get the kids to peel some spuds. And it's delicious. What do you reckon, Rue? Do you like having the party pies, mashed potato and three veg? Oh my God, I love that. It is good, isn't it? Is, this favorite is a good game, actually. Do you want to tell everyone what this game's called? So, um, we, um, from this, we all got paid. So we're playing this game here. Yeah, don't keep the money. Yes, um, it's Billy it's like you, you set up a shop in your bed and then you got to buy stuff through the window. Yeah, right? see, like these. Right. We have Beyblades. Yeah, nice. And then out here. Who's your customer? Who Billy. you got? How you going, sir? 
Can I get you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much money you got? Uh, Would you like this? Ten. Give me all your money. Uh, no. Dinner's up. What's the verdict, kids? Sausage, um, patty pies. <laughs> what do you like better, the patty pies or the sausage rolls? Sausage I like rolls. patty pies. Do you? Um, yeah. Actually, no, both. 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 I like both because I don't like too much of the sausage roll and too much of the patty pie. Well, there you go. That's why I give you a couple of each. You don't have to eat them all, by the way. Don't, I want to eat them you all. You can um, give Dad one if you like. I'll eat them. I love a good patty pie with a bit of sauce on it. You're not eating any anyway, time, mister. We don't do it too often, but it's a good little meal. And it's easy. It's so easy. At least you're still getting a bit of veg. But, I mean, we have another pie pie. Yum. Here she comes. Hi. Hey? Wait. You smell that or what? You know that's happening. I'm so pregnant for a steak too. How's no, the you hair? Just need that's a really pretty. good yeah. Bex just been to get her hair done, she's beautiful. Okay. I love her even more because she's bought me a fishing rod. Yeah. Oh, are you kidding? Thanks, dear. Oh. You know the way to a man's heart, don't you? Another Hi, rod. Yay. <laughs> Hello. Oh, anyway, there you go. Hi. Our first night pretty much back on the road. Good morning, mate. <laughs> I've been telling we still them. still haven't left. <laughs> We're going to do a. Um, well, I'm not do, but I'm going to show you around Warrnambool while Beck's finishing off I her know. last few shifts. Yeah, just a couple Aww, of things that we do. I grew up. Yeah. Anyway. It's a cute little town. You should check out dinner. Look at this. Got a couple of crazy porterhouses oh. on. But I'm about do you want to me to make a salad? No, no. I've got this. Look at oh. this. Oh, yeah. Beck's favourite is a bit of um, uh, coconut oil on eggplant with salt and pepper. Oh, yeah. And they are going to go on the grill, dude. actually makes me happy. Jesse! I can't wait. Oh. I've even got a baked potato on the go for you. Oh, Charles, you've outdone yourself. Mm -hmm. Here you go, my love. Have a look at this. Yay. Justin's a really good cook, if you didn't know. Well, you wait till you try that steak, mate. That is old chat. Mm. That's old mate's from the Goldie. Oh. From our paddock, yeah. All the way from the Goldie. I'll there give you a plate. I'll put his details down here. We met this really good meat. Nice young fellow on the Goldie who started his own paddock to plate business. Mm. And this is our, I've got one, I've got two steaks left in the freezer. I don't want them to end. They no, so we need though. to save them. Oh. But oh, this is just like my ultimate meal. Have a look Thanks, at it. Thanks, hugs. It's alright. Thank you. Beautiful. Here we are. There it is, the little town of Panmuir. Is how you spell it. Alright, eh? Say it. Spell it. Same spell thing, it. my love. Here, take this. We're going to drive in and show you the free camp first, which is just on the side of the highway now. One thing to note is that um, if you do the Great Ocean Road, it'll bring you out further down. So if you want to come back to the hole, you got to turn right and just come back five or six minutes. If you're coming from like Geelong, across through this way, Colac and that, you will um, come straight past it. But there you go, hot tip. Look this way, one side is the free camp, the other side where this shed is, is the Panmuir Hole, a little pottery on the corner. So uh, you can't quite see it on the highway there. You can just see the shed, a few kids down there and it's a nice little dam, but swing around. Here is the free camp. Free camp. Sure. Drive in there and show you. There's a little playground in there. Um, nice and grass. It's a good little spot actually, eh? Hey? Like, yeah, it is nice. We'll take you in now and there you go. have a squeeze. Hook a left. Plenty of room for your caravan There's and stuff. There's a little pub over here and a general store there. But you just drive in here yeah. and you can basically park anywhere. Yep, you just park anywhere. So, I've seen um, the good ones are, you see people just swing in, just back in under oh, these trees here. Um, beautiful. Yeah, nice and grassy, plenty of shade. And uh, like this, look at this, there's no one here, mate. There's no one here. There's a playground here. You can even pull, pull up right here if you want, back in. Kids can play. Toilets. Toilets over there, and you've got a little camp kitchen just here. There you go. And all you have to do is walk under the bridge to go to the swimming pool. We'll show you. There you go. Justin's just going to park in here and we're just going to head onto the bridge there and go straight into the swimming hole. River little spot. Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> Ready, Dad? Yeah, mate. Go. Go, Bezzy, you're up. How's the water, Ruth? Great. 
It's actually it's not too cold. Not that cold because <laughs> it's hot today. Don't hit your chin if you're going backwards. Yeah, I know. Ready? Yeah. yeah. What do you reckon about the Pam Mira Holba? Great. <laughs> Last one? Yeah, ready? Yeah, just a good one. Don't stack it. Alrighty, so a day trip out of our little caravan park. Well, I keep saying day trip, but it's not. It's just a little trip down the road and we're going to uh, the Warrnambool Skate Park. So down near the Lady Bay is a massive skate park and the kids just froth on it. And so from where we are in the caravan park, we can just ride all the way down the footpath. It takes you about five or six minutes to get there. And when we get there, I'll show you the skate park. It's pretty cool. And there's um, a coffee shop right nearby too, which makes it even better for the parents. Where are we going, boss? Skate park. Yeah. Where are we going, boss? Skate park. I'm better than Jack. I'm better than Jack. Jack can't even drop down the baby railing. Where are we going, man? Skate park. Yeah. I love it. And here you go, the Warney Skate Park. Have a look at it. Think go. Go. Oh, here we go. Bit of stump cam action. Right over. Do your best, mate. Whip it in. Here he comes. Here he comes. Whoa. Oh. Oh. They call that a harmy. It's a Jack Harmy. <laughs> hey, um, if you come over to Lake Patobe from the car caravan park here, there's a couple of wicked cricket pitches hey, in the lake. There's, there's like two of them. There, there's one here and there's one further down as well. But yeah. full concrete, there's like a backstop there so you don't have to the ball doesn't go on the road. And there's heaps of beautiful green grass around so you can just play cricket for ages. Yeah? Righto. Let's go. Thumbs up. I'll give you my best pull rifle. Watch this. <laughs> Billy's gonna give us his best move, Hughes. Oh, catch that, Bill. Oh, here I come. Oh, you smoked it. <laughs> well done, Charlie Bear. Oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> if you hadn't noticed, I love cricket. Hey, I used to play cricket flat out as a youngster. Right arm, super fast. Round the wicket. Oh, smoke! Billy, Billy, Billy! Oh! <laughs> he put it down in the outfield, you're killing me. Catch that, Rui, catch that. Yes, son. Okay. Well done. What do you reckon about that, boys? That was yeah. good. Who's, um, who's the best cricket player? Me. Huh. What about Dad? <laughs> no, I reckon I pretty good. <laughs> I like me. to look at their moves huh? and batting. You've got a few years yet no, before I you can get me. No, I way longer than Jack. Anyway, it's a good time. Just get down here when you're in Warrnambool. Find the Lake Patobe cricket pitch and the park. It's killer, mate. You can thank me later. So good, here. Yeah. What's going on, Jacko? Right, hey, today is Beck's last day. So we're dropping the ute back off at the farm so we can get going tomorrow, but she'll be that keen go, 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 go. to crack into a coldy, I reckon, and it's not funny. I'm surprised she's not doing 120 k's an hour coming in here. Here she is. <laughs> anyway, that's the end of it. Six weeks of uni placement. She's done really well. Got a couple of little treats for her. I've got her some flowers, um, got her a nice cold drink, and another little treat back in the van when we get there. So we'll show you that, but anyway. We'll wait for her to pull up and we'll see how she went. We'll give her a big congratulations, eh? <laughs> I'm pretty proud of her, eh? Well, actually, I'm really proud of her. It's hard work. Hey, dear. What have we got for mum? Flowers. Flowers. Did you choose them? Yep. Wait for her to come around the corner. You get him? Oh, oh, that's so lovely. Well done, Thank dear. You. Hey, oh, we're all so proud thanks. of you. You just Thank smashed you. it out like a gun. Oh, Look at this, a little bit of a hard soda. Oh, Thank you. There you go, my love. Oh, and I love nice you. Like oh. I've got one more thing for you. Yeah. I bought you a present. It's a home on the bed. So we'll have to wait there and you can see that when you get home. You excited? Oh, yeah. I just You've don't... wanted one for ages. We head off tomorrow. So giddy up. Giddy up. <laughs>
<laughs> Come, here, come over here, dear. Now, I know you've wanted one of these for a long time. Oh, I can see! Oh my god! I'm a hopeless cook, so this is going to be a brilliant addition to I don't the know, I've lost track of how many people over the years have told you to get a I know, because I'm, I'm literally, I'm, I'm, I don't have a creative cooking mind. And this is going to tell me what to do. Stand, oh, there you go. Oh my god! <laughs> So you finally Dulcet, got your thermi. You've outdone yourself. Well, I have, mate. That's your for you, mate, for finishing your nursing placement. Oh, hey? Wow, yeah. that's a bit impressive. Oh, that oh, went fall off the bed. Oh Jesus! Wow. Oh, the oops, way. yeah. Go. Oh my goodness. So there you go. Hey, I reckon look out. The, the first dish will probably be margaritas. I'm guessing, knowing you. Probably. And the second probably vegetable soup. Yeah, and do you know what I'm excited about? Actually, What's is that? making um. Because I'm gluten-free, dairy-free, making like raw slices and stuff, oh, and bliss balls. True. That's oh, and, and, and more cakes. Food cakes. Yeah, Dad bought two mixes of cake so we can make a oh, big cake. Yeah, no, that's for the camp oven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so there you go, dear. Yeah, I look forward to my culinary delights that you're going to make with that. Mm, I'm stoked. You wait. I reckon <laughs> this is going to be my best friend. I've got my fourth faith, child. Isn't it? Fourth child. Fourth child. Well, as long as that's the only fourth child we have, I'm happy. Yep. <laughs>But I'm just like, oh, this is just life. Yeah. It's weird. It's just, we're just getting back into it. <laughs> anyway, um, what we're going to do is we're leaving Warrnambool. Uh, it's been our home for the last eight weeks. And we're heading to a place called Halls Gap in the Grampians. And we're going to catch up with um, some mates. But we also work with them. They're the guys, the marketing team from ARB. Uh, we're going to catch up with them for a few days. Just have a bit of a yarn, have a few beers. You know, like I said, we're pretty good mates with them. Hmm. And we're just going to hang out. Um, so we'll... We're going to ask them a few questions too. I dropped the thing on socials about any questions out there that you guys want to ask them. So we'll put together a bit of a questionnaire and we'll just um, say good day to those guys. And we're going to check out a walk around Hall's Gut, go to the pub, have a campfire. Yeah. Just that sort of thing. Look Ease back into life on the road, mate. We so. don't muck around. I only finished placement yesterday. <laughs> and we're out so of here. So I feel like, yeah, it's good to just get back into it. I'm super excited, but at the same time, I'm just like still getting over my placement a little bit today, but... You'll be right, dear. I will Another be. two coffees and she'll be... Oh, God. I've it. already had two coffees, like espresso ones. So I'm like, don't think I could do any more. Anyway, Hall's Gap, the Grampians. We'll show you a bit around there. And then um, we might have to make a mad dash for the border. We'll see what happens. I don't know. The Thanks, news today, COVID. bloody COVID flare up and all this stuff. Mm. If we get 24 hours notice to go, then we're going to have to go. Yeah, so I apl applied for our border passes yesterday. Um, and because we're in Warrnambool, they got approved straight away. So... Um, yeah, they're sitting in my email, ready to go to show border police or whatever if they're there. Yep. Um, and like Justin said, if we get 24 hours notice, we can shoot across. We can go. And we're literally only two hours from the border anyway. Yeah. Warnables. Warnable to Mount Gambia is nothing. And we're only two hours to Halls Gap, so we're going to hit that. <clears throat> and we'll show you around Halls Gap when we get there. Yay! Oh, look, it's a sheep crossing. Look at all the sheepies. Oh hey. Gosh. All's gap, baby. There you go. Welcome to the Grampians National Yay. Park. And here we are, mate. The Hall's Gap Holiday Park. And there's the Lynx truck. Check this thing out, mate. Hey, what an absolute beast. Have a look at this. It's the ARB Lynx truck. What an absolute weapon. Right, oh. So Hall's Gap, mate. We've made it to Hall's Gap. Two hours from Warrnambool. We got here, right? Have a look at the campsite we've got. It's absolutely specky. Backs onto the bush, you got the Grampians surrounding you. What we did have planned was a couple of days of camping, a few campfires, a couple of cook-ups. And I was going to show you the ARB guys, we're going to have a bit of a chat and spend four days together. But lo and behold, what's happened today, Mark? Mate, COVID's back, 3.0. <laughs> so COVID, half an hour ago, we got another, I don't know, what is it? News headline, lockdown stage four, and we're not allowed to go anywhere. So we're going to actually spend about an hour and a half together, not four days, and we're going to shoot to SA, and these guys are going to have to head home. But <laughs> anyway, 
ah, it, it is what it is. COVID, it's been a crazy 2020, now it's going to be a crazy 2021. But anyway, I want to introduce you to a couple of people. So this is Mark Berger. Your position, mate, is? Uh, brand Marketing Manager for IRB. There you go. And come over here, meet the lovely <laughs> Shannon. How are you, mate? Good. How are you? And your position? So I am PR and communication. So I look after all the press guys and the sponsorship side of it. Um, yeah, everything, events, things like that. It does a bloody good job of it. Now, <laughs> these are the guys we deal with from ARB. So we get a lot of questions from you guys about how we're involved and how does it work and all that sort of thing. Well, first and foremost, I like to think of us, we're mainly just mates. Pretty much. You know, <laughs> we get along really well. We have friendships rather than partnerships in everything we do. Me and Beck, get in here, Beck. Get in here. Hi, group hard. So we like to keep it, <laughs> we keep it on the level like we like to meet everyone, you know. If we can go camping with someone, then we can work with someone, you know. So it's good. They're really we're super devo we're not camping this week. I oh, know, our plans have really messed this up. Aww. But anyway, it happened last year too. We were supposed yeah. to go to Love Day and COVID kicked off. But what the guys have done, they've brought down a Lynx truck. So while they're here, I want to show you a bit of this because um, I've also got, well, they've got a sneaky new addition that I'm going to put in my truck that we'll talk about in a second. And then we'll sit down and uh, answer a few questions that you sent through on social. So if you had like, I don't know, 25 words to explain Lynx in a nutshell, what would it be? Well, so what we call it is it's a, an accessory interface. So it's an electronic interface that allows you to control all your electronic accessories basically through one interface that's, that's hard mounted into your car. Uh, we've got the uh, compressor, so you can obviously can control your pre compressor, but with an added accessory, you can actually even control the pressure of it. So you can basically set and forget. It's, it's like using a, a gun of the servo. Yeah. You basically go, oh, I want 35 PSI, hit the go button. You don't need to run a gauge, you just attach it to your tyre. She'll run up to 35 and then it'll stop pumping oh, happy once days. it hits the yeah. ideal pressure. So yeah. that's a pretty cool system. And you can do that get both going up and going down. Pretty sweet. So what um, Mark's brought one down for me and um, what we're going to do, it's a new addition for the Link system, but it's a, a single module just for the air pressure control. So I can chuck it on my dual compressor and it's got a Bluetooth link to inside the car or to your phone. To your phone you just yeah, download yeah. the app and use the phone. And then when you air up and down like we do, it's a pain in the bum when you've got the car and van tires and you've got to sit there with the chuck and watch the gauge, right? Yeah. Normally, I'd try and get the kids to do it, but then you've got to recheck them because one will be 10 pound and one will be 60 pound. Now, all I have to do is hook the hose up, set it with the Bluetooth link, and it'll just, at whatever pressure I set it to, it'll get to that and the compressor will cut out and my tires will be where I want them. And the beauty is you can even do that if you've got a bit more time even do it on the way back down you go oh i'm getting off road and then i'm on the sandy track i'm going to go down to 25 you chuck them on set it to 25 leave them go down to 25 and stop them pull the chuck off Happy and away days. you go don't even have to use it easy to float it i can see it being good because i'll just let the kids do it you know Absolutely. i can set it and they can run around i can make a cup of coffee and we'll be set so Beautiful. i'll show you a few of those things but in a further video down the track i'll do a little install and show you how it works Perfect. so there you go too easy anyway that's the lynx truck mate it's a All right, so we're going to sit down and I'm going to answer a few questions. I put a, a question box on Insta a little while ago, just saying, what do you want to know about ARB, how we work together, or the ARB business, right? So I got heaps. I probably got 150 questions. I stopped it because there was too many. But we're going to answer 10 today, 10, 10 of the most relevant ones. Shannon's over here hiding in the background. She's going to read them out, and then Mark and myself are going to answer them. Yeah, bloody hell. Let's okay. go. All right, question one. What are the best recovery tracks? Oh, there you go. Well, that's easy. Trade price. <laughs> <laughs> the roof rack load ratings for on and off road use. Oh, we know there's been a hot topic recently. This one I just found out about. I didn't know there was a bit of a kerfuffle about off road load ratings. Yep. So well, fill me in. Well, hey, very simple with ARB. All of our product is obviously made for off road. We're a 4x4 company yep. and we expect you to be using it 4x4ing. So all of our roof racks are manufactured, designed and engineered to work with the roof load capacity of the specific vehicle. We mount, we test all of our mounting kits yeah. for vehicle specific mounts. Oh. So fundamentally, um, if you're buying a roof rack, an ARB roof rack, to go onto your roof, it will comply and fit within the roof load limit. There is no discounts no or whether you're on yeah. road or off road, it, it doesn't matter. Sorry. It, it is what it is. Yeah. So um, basically, look up the roof load limit of your specific vehicle, and uh, and anything you buy from ARB will be matched to meet that requirement. There you go. So I think we got that question because not all racks are like that. They do have an on-road and off-road capacity. So make sure you look out for that. Explore the marketing idea of how their products last longer and parts can easily be sourced. Hey, Mate, all you. <laughs> it's an interesting one, right? I mean, a lot of people say, and probably one of the the, uh, the terms that's been coined the, uh, the most is buy once, buy right. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's where the whole ARB brand sits, is we know that there's a lot of stuff out there in the market, right? And 
and we appreciate the idea of maybe going to market with an idea, but it's, it's actually pretty well known, we think, that people start to appreciate, they meet people on the road like yourselves, you understand the difference between buying good gear yep. and buying, you know, the cheaper stuff. And, and you guys just couldn't do what you do with cheap gear. Unreliable. Uh, yeah. and, and to that point, having that network of support, even when you've got good gear, you've still got to know that, you know, you, you treat it rough or you're in outback locations, things can go bad. And, yep. And it's good to know that you've got a network there that can support you. So obviously ARB is really lucky. We've got over 180 stores and stockers across Australia. You can be in Weeper up on the uh, up on the Cape, and we've got a stockist Still there. Um, you know, Mount Isa. We've got people pretty much everywhere, which is fantastic. So, look, yeah. Good to know, and, and maybe we can do a bit more work around that. And it's something that we love to make sure people understand more and more is that ARB's got a really rock solid uh, network for support. And obviously, you know, we expect that people appreciate that, that ARB product is made to last. Yeah. How do we get to a place like yourselves and get involved with ARB? What does it take? <laughs> uh, I'll kick off. Well, from my side of things, I don't know about these guys, I'll let Mark answer in a second, but we just did what we love to do, right? It was never about, hey, in the peanut gallery back there. Jeez. <laughs> From our point of view, we never set out to get sponsorship or to become what we are now. It's evolved over years of travel and doing something that we love. So I think maybe that's what shined through to these guys in the first place, but I'll let Mark. I, and, and second testament to that, you didn't approach us. Exactly. We yeah. approached you. Yeah. And I think the difference is that, yeah, we've always got our ear to the ground. We we literally, Shannon spends time monitoring what's going on out there to understand people that have that authentic connection with what they're doing. Yeah. And and they're doing it right because clearly you've got an audience that are following you, that are engaging with your content, that want to know more. Yeah. And that to us says, well, hey, you know, at the end of the day, marketing is what we do and we want to get our, our brand out there to make sure our people understand that. And and the likes of yourselves who actually chose our brand already, you were already representing us. We weren't, you didn't come to us and then and then us say, oh, hey, let's put this on, let's put that on, let's put this on. Yep. Uh, you were already representing, you were already choosing to have ARB. So for us, it was a no brainer, yeah, and that's where it comes. So as you said, get out there, uh, be authentic, do it because you want to do it, yep. uh, create good content, get the engagement, and choose brands that you genuinely believe in and stick by them. Best product for beginner beach drivers. Ooh. This is a good one. What do I'm, you reckon? I'm going to say recovery tracks. Yep, I reckon I'd be right up there. I think there's a few things if you're going out there as a beginner. We all know tyre pressures is key, so you've got to go out with a good tyre gauge and easy to flow to mm -hmm. make sure you get those tyre pressures right and understand that. Recovery tracks are going to be next. Somebody to travel with. Don't go out doing beach driving by yourself. Not as and, a beginner. Nah, and with that obviously comes the idea of maybe a snatch strap, a good rated recovery point both on the front and rear of your vehicle. And a tide chart. Yeah, and a tide chart. Go on low tide, mate. That's if you're it. worried about anything, go at the bottom of the tide. So if you do get stuck, you've got at least four hours, six at the most, to get yourself out. Yeah, and you seriously have to consider where you're going to be coming off the beach because if you're not close to a service station, you really need to have a compressor because you will absolutely shred your tyres or potentially uh, blow one up yep. if you start travelling down the highway at 100 k's on 20 per size. Yep. So. And I'll tell you, if you're coming off the beach access at road, <laughs> and you, you've got 18 pound in your tyres, and you hit the roundabout. You hit the roundabout and leave it in full drive. You'll probably blow a CV. Yeah. Just, I don't know who did that, but anyway. story from a Something guy with we know. Just, yeah, had a full wheel drive before you hit the bitumen. It helped. Why did they move all the manufacturing offshore, and will they bring it back to Australia? When did that happen? Well, I seen that question, and I sort of thought, well, it was only 18 months ago. I walked through the factory and saw about 8,000 bull bars being made in Melbourne. So I don't. Yeah, I'm sure you'd get some stuff made overseas. There's an interesting mis misconception that, that ARB are no longer an Australian manufacturer and, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah. Uh, manufacturing in Australia for ARB is, is no weaker than it has ever been, actually. It's probably arguably as strong, if not stronger, than it's ever been. Uh, we do 100% still have a manufacturing plant in Melbourne at Kilsyth, where our head office is. The business has grown exponentially and our export market is actually pretty big now. ARB is a brand that people in Europe, America, Latin America, China, you know, people are choosing ARB and with that comes our distribution network yep. and, and growing capacity. So we don't hide from the fact that we also own and operate our own manufacturing plants in Thailand as well, where we have some really specialty gear done. Our BP51 suspension is specifically built there. Uh, our base racks are specifically built there. And that's because we've got and invested really heavily in that particular market. But I can't stress enough that Australian manufacturing, ARB's manufacturing in Australia is, is at its peak. It's never been higher. Yep. And, and we have in no way, shape or form, shipped uh, you know, jobs or, or taken away no, from, no. from what we do here. There you go.
looking at Old Man Emu 2 inch lift kit on the ute to tow a 19 foot semi off road. Do you think this is necessary and or beneficial? I think absolutely necessary for safety and for touring capabilities and for off road capabilities. In my opinion, a 2 inch lift and 33 inch tyres is probably the best touring combo you can get. And if you're going to Upgrade it at the same time with a heavier rear spring set so you can upgrade your GVM to handle the tow ball weight of a van. Absolute, hands down, first modification you should make if you want to tour the country, in my opinion. Absolutely. Suspension, a few things. It's not about lift, it's actually about weight load, carrying capacity. So obviously two inches is the nominal and we all have obviously strive to achieve that. But at the end of the day, you've got that big heavy down ball weight on, on the back of your car and you need to be able to support that. As a general rule, the OEs aren't, aren't designed to carry your touring weight, no. that tow ball weight. Yeah, they're made to be able to drive off the dealership floor and feel really, really nice. And everything you do to it is a little bit of a compromise. So we just help to bring that stability back into it, the performance and the handling. And uh, in my opinion, you'd be nuts to go traveling with a, with a big van without uh, making sure your suspension was up to scratch. Absolutely, I agree. Can ARB make it easier to see prices of their product online? Oh, I, yeah, it is a bit hard. We get this question all the time. There is, I'll flick a link to everyone who asked me because there is an ARB online price thing. Um, it's about 4,000 pages long. <laughs> so it is a fair bit to download, but I don't know why you don't have more. All right, look, it's something we will continue to work on in the future. Websites evolve, and as you said, the, the amount of part numbers and bits and pieces that we you know, we facilitate is astronomical, and we're not an e-commerce business. Yeah, yeah. So obviously it's, it's a nature of the beast. Uh, but yes, the, the pricing is actually readily available. You can put in your postcode and download the appropriate price book for your location. Uh, yes, it's a comprehensive yeah. PDF, and it uh, it's broken down by vehicle make and model and year and all those kind of things, and it gives you all the options of what's available for your vehicle. But uh, but we do appreciate it. And the other thing we, we strongly recommend is you actually pick up the phone or go into one of your stores, because at the end of the day, fitting out a four-wheel drive isn't as simple as going, oh, what bull bar can I have and how much is it? Yeah. You really need to understand the intricacies of how this connects with that and why things work together, and understand, get that bit of advice. You go into a four-wheel drive or an ARB four-wheel drive store, and you don't just get a sales and you get a four-wheel drive enthusiast who really understands the product, they do four-wheel driving, they understand it, and they really strictly want to help you get the best out of your vehicle. So I can't be a, a bigger advocate for picking up the phone or walking into one of your local ARB stores rather than you know, being driven to a, a, a price-based decision based on a product available for your vehicle. Happy days. Hey, while we're on that, and I, I know another question, so Shannon doesn't have to read it, is uh, why don't you have an online store so you can buy your gear online? Hey, that's another interesting one. And again, we appreciate that e-commerce is a big thing, but um, it's funny, I see the marketing. People say, oh, e-commerce, we want e-commerce. And then we say, oh, we want to support Australian jobs and Australian infrastructure. And you know what, one almost kind of kills the other or has an effect that we have to be very mindful of. At the end of the day, we have, as I've just said, over 180 you know, mum and dad stores, you know, looking after our brand, their yep. full drive specialists, their fitters, their salespeople, their, you know, the accounts and, and owners and yep. this, the, the likes. So for us, you know, and, and you also got to remember that our product, you know, you're not going to have a bull bar drop shipped to your door, no. most people. Yeah, yeah. You know, we appreciate there might be a few out there that would like to enjoy that, but the, the bulk part of our business is about facilitating that servicing. You come in, you get a full service, it's drive in, drive out, you pick all your gear, you know, your naked car might come in straight off the showroom and it comes out completely decked and you know that it's been looked after, uh, it's warranted, the fitting's been warranted and everything's been looked after. So, you know, we see that part of being a big part of our business. However, we take it on board and, and we definitely are always looking forward to, to how we can make sure that we are, I guess, servicing the market as best we can. And e-commerce is definitely not, you know, ever off the table, mm. um, but it's just not something we're in right now. Yeah, there you go. All right, final question. Be honest, how big of a pain in the ass is Justin? <laughs> I'm going to defer, this one. This, one, I'm gonna defer <laughs> this one to Beck. <laughs> oh, I'll speak for myself for a second. I don't think I'm that big of a pain in the ass. I'm probably not. I might be a little bit precious now and then, dear. You're a bit what annoying. What do you reckon? A little bit annoying? Anyway. From a sponsorship point of view, <laughs> he's a massive pain in the ass, but we tolerate him because we really like him. <laughs> and the kids are great. But no, no, all jokes aside, we, we love spending time. As, as Justin said, this isn't, this isn't all business. Mm. Um, these are mates. Yep. And, uh, it's good. And, and every time we get together, it lasts about an hour and a half and someone has to go because COVID rolled in. Mm. But apart from that, when we do get together, we, uh, we always have a great time. So nah, it's always been, always been good working with you guys and we're looking forward to years to come. Absolutely. Well, there you go. We'll lock that in, dear. Years to come. Years, so it's a free we'll get that signed off, eh? Yep. Anyway, uh, there you go. A couple of questions. Thanks heaps to Shannon. 
Thanks heaps to Mark. Cheers, yours. Spewing, we're not going to hang out over the next few days. But uh, if we get stuck in Victoria, mate, I think we'll both. We'll lose it. We'll go postal. Hey? <laughs> we just got to get out of here. So it's a shame. These guys are going to head off back to Melbourne as well, yeah, I think. Absolutely. Got to get back. It's actually five days of lockdown. You can't leave the caravan park. They shut masks all the amenities. On. Masks on outside. So anyway, it is what it is. It's a crazy world. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Too easy. See you next time. See ya when we cross the border, I reckon, in about three hours. See ya. Say bye. See you, lads. Bye. Next time. <laughs> Next time we'll make it longer than an hour and a half, too. <laughs> That'd be nice. Maybe two. Yeah. Oh, see right you, guys. Right. See ya. Where are we going, dear? We are heading over the border. I think at this stage, going to go to Narra Court. There you go. I've got to get on Google Maps and have a bit. bit Better, more of a squid. Let's figure it out. Anyway, we've got till midnight and it is five o'clock in the afternoon. So we're gonna try and make it somewhere across the border into SA. So we don't have to do stage four lockdown, which we've never done and we don't really like the sound of it. So mm. we're gonna get out of here. Super bummed, I, I am mm. sad. We've been trying to catch up with these guys for so long. Just chill out, hang out, campfire, a few beers. Not gonna happen. Anyway, we'll show you where we end up tonight. Who knows? Over the border, anyway. Yeah. Yay! We made we it! Through, hey? Well, luckily, Rebecca um, got on a couple of days ago and I got did. our border passes, which is just a travel registration. And then, even better, the copper that pulled us up knew who we were and liked yeah. all our videos. So he was like, no drugs. Great. Thanks, Daniel. Take all the, copper Daniel. Yeah. What a legend. Takes our numbers and off you go. So, yeah. make sure if you're crossing, well, after midnight, you're probably stuffed now, but mm. if. Um, yeah, after that five day lockdown, get on the SA website and get the travel registration form done. Super easy to fill out. Yeah, it was really quick and easy and it was valid until May from memory and we're in February at the moment, so. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. There you go. Well, oh, it's a bit of a relief. I know, we're a little bit worried there for a minute, it's but good, anyway. good, because you'll be right now. SA's got no restrictions. Yeah. It's going to be happy days and we're like sick. Oh, so. just, this is just great. Good anyway, on, we're heading into Narracourt. We're going to hit up the showgrounds. Right, so this is free. Um, this is great. Oh, it's great. Showgrounds are always really Normally they're awesome. about 20 bucks these days. Normally, yeah. But, but this one's oh, only free. They're always really well maintained. and Look at yeah. the grass. Hey, it wasn't okay. free. No, it wasn't free. It was oh. actually $18 for unpowered or 25 for powered. So we obviously don't need power. So we're just 18 bucks. Um, I'll show you where we pull up. But the, I walked in there and um, the lady's like, oh, where are you from and everything? She goes, oh, you've got three daughters there. And I go, no, two boys and a girl. Oh, we get that all the time. It's freezing here. Yeah, it is cold. So cold. It's, um, it's 7.30 though. Like, it's, she's getting, it's getting on. There you go. Our first day back on the road. It didn't quite go to plan, did it, dear? No, sorry, I'm just updating my family. <laughs> they're like, ah, where are you? But um, it's worked out. We've ended up at the showground in Narracourt. And a nice little sunrise, or sunset, sorry, going down over there. And um, we're all absolutely buggered, so we're going to have an me? early night. Can you see me? Yeah, I can yeah. see you. Hi. We're going to have an early night and oh, take the are. kids. Hopefully, if we have good weather tomorrow, yeah. we're going to show you the Narracourt, the swimming hole. It's like a big, it's pretty cool. It's half sort of man-made, half natural. It's massive. And it's wicked. So we're probably gonna get a skate park after the war. And I think we'll go to the skate park as well. Uh, I wanna go. I learned how to jump in a few days ago, so I really wanna go to a few skate parks. Yeah. That's alright. You can go and shred. Dropping in. So there you go. And I'm getting a new scooter too. So I'm excited. Super pumped, aren't you? Mm. <laughs> Naughty night. Naughty. Looks like they're going to war. It's a bit loud, ain't we? Yeah. Hey, um, I've been thinking about this for a while, but I'm going to start a new tradition, seeing as this is another year on the road for us. And now um, we're just about to leave camp. And you know what's full? What's full, dear? The toilet. The toilet's full. This year is the year of Rebecca emptying oh the toilet. Oh, my God. What do you reckon? Why? What? Why can't well, I don't know. Well, don't you think if I've done it for five years straight that you could... Straight. I'm Take. pretty sure I've done plenty. <laughs> uh, uh, I hate emptying the toilet, mate. It's like the worst part. You know, some of our best hatched plans 
have all stemmed from just sitting at the skate park while we're watching the kids, you know? You sort of, I sit here going, this is the 487th skate park I've been to in five years. And I start thinking about where we're gonna go next. And you just get a light bulb idea and you send a few messages and you hmm. Google a few things and then... Lo and behold. Lo and behold. <laughs> we've got a plan. We've got an actual plan. Hmm. It's For not the next like us. week anyway. It's good. I'll tell you about it. Do you want to tell them? Yeah, well, currently we're in Naracor. Mm -hmm. As you know, we just crossed the border. Um, we know there's some really stellar, amazing hot weather coming. Like, I'm talking 30 plus people. Yeah. And we've decided we want to hit the coast. We have. So we're going to hit up the Flurio Peninsula and go see our friends, Danny and Malcolm, who own the Wrong point. Peninsula, my love. The York. Oopsie. Never mind. Too. We're going back. You would have seen us in the past. We've been to a place called Point Turton. We're going back. The weather's killer. We've got the tinny. The fish are on the chew, Malcolm reckons. So we're going to hit Point Turton. And the we'll kids are going to catch up. up with their mates who live there. They've got a couple of young boys as well. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go and sit over there and enjoy this stellar weather that's coming up. Because so far, we've had four days of summer in this summer, <laughs> which isn't really our is sort of style. Is summer finished? Summer's... Oh, no, the 1st of March it finishes. There you go. We're going to make our way down to Point Turton. And I'm going to load up on squid. I'm, I'm calling it early. You know, I, you know, I'm only saying that I'm well, confident yeah, because room. I know Malcolm, who runs the caravan park, will put me onto some fish. If I had to do it myself, I'd probably catch nothing because you all know how good I am. Jacko? And I'm still the only one in the skate park. Like, <laughs> the only one here. You've been skating for about an hour and a half. And those two are going skate park, playground. playground. Skate park, playground. playground. It's good, actually. I if you're coming through Narrow Court, come down here to the um, rec, re rec reserve. Hmm. And stay. Anyway, we're going to Point Turton. I'm keen. I'm keen. How'd you go, dear? Good. Good as gold. Now you had a bit of an issue with some marinated feta, you reckon? Listen, no worker in Woolworths at Narrow Court know where marinated feta is. You're just too posh, my love. I know. I was like, oh. So what'd you, what'd you end up with? I ended up with just no, the normal package feta. So I'll make do, but... Yeah, I'll pass me in the groceries. She was sending me text messages from in there going, Oh my god, I can't find my marinated feta, I'm flipping out. <laughs> I was not flipping out. I'm out. thinking, oh, everyone in there has been like, who's this crazy oh Sheila worried about marinated Excuse feta? Excuse our caravan, it is an absolute shamozzle at the minute. You just feed the kids and everything in here, mate. Oh. Anyway, we'll get there. It's only day one, day two, back yeah. on the road, we've got to get into it. All right, I'll help um, load the groceries in. Did you get any, any sneaky treats for later on? No, I didn't actually. Oh, you're killing me. Well, we've got a Thermomix now, so we can make one. What, are you going to make me a bar of chocolate? Hey, so we're off. We're heading towards uh, Adelaide, right? But I just wanted to touch base with you and let you know there's a couple of ways to get there. We're going to take like the top road, which is sort of the more inland route. But if you haven't been across this way, I would recommend taking the coastal road that goes through Robe, Beachport, the Coorong, uh, Kingston, all that sort of stuff, because it's really nice down there. But because we're moving over to Point Turton, we know where we're going and we've seen that coastal road before. Um, we're going to take the top way and just um, probably just stay at sports grounds and showgrounds on the way across. So we're either going to hit the Savo, it's either going to be Tail and Bend, which is two hours away. Clear left. Or um, Keith, which is only an hour away. Do you know what I just discovered at Woolies? I can't believe I haven't done it before. Avocado in a tube. Yeah. Did you, did you buy it? Yeah. Oh, did you try it? I'm eating it. Oh, is it good? Life changing. Get out. Mm, I really like it. Huh. And then you're not like letting a half an avocado sit in the fridge. Mate, like, yeah, but when do we ever waste avocado? We yeah, I know. Well, I just thought we'd give it a go. It was How five, much was it? Five bucks for the tube, but it's a fairly big tube. Do you reckon you'd get like two avocados in a tube? I'll have to have a look how many avocados it said it was on it. You know. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. Guys, I love avocado. Like Avocado is life. It is said life. Before. Like I have it on everything. It has to be the salad. What are you feeling? Do you reckon we'll make it to Keith or we'll make it to Taylor Ben? You know, it's 1.30. We'll decide it now. So <laughs> when we get to Keith. We just need an hour before dinner because we're going to do a curry. So. We're using the thermi. Got to break it in. Yeah. <laughs> well, you think after five years of travel that we'd get our, at least our campsite spot sorted before we got there, wouldn't you? Well, there's the Keith showground. Keith. 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 Um, and it's shut, mate. There's no bloody camping in there. Don't worry about We didn't about check that. the reviews, though. It probably says it's shut. Uh, anyway, I'm going to turn in here and turn around. But, um, 
Oh, I don't know, maybe we just camp here, who knows? I'll go stop here and read the sign, but this time of year, when it's so busy on the road and it's a showground, there would be other vans here, I can guarantee it. So, anyway, I don't know what we've done. I need to do some more research. I'm bloody silly, aren't I? We're at the showgrounds, that's for sure. All right, maybe it's your turn to choose one, dear. Mm. <laughs> well, welcome. We've made it to our next spot. It's a little one, it's called Lake Indawarra in the town of Tintanana. I'll put it in here because I don't know if I said that right or not. But it's pretty much just a bush camp in the middle of nowhere. If we're coming in, we'll show Becky Boo. What do you think, babe? Hi. Random, random spot in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it is a bit random, but you know what? There's a bit of water. There's a couple um, of silos. I'll put the drone up and show you around. It's yeah. quite a nice little spot. It's all right. And the best part is it's free, mate. So there you it's go. Free. But that's cool. We um, we could have went on to something a little bit nicer, but we're just done with the car today. And hello, we've got a chicken curry to put on. That's it. Got to think about dinner. So here is the camping area, right? You'll see the van and that behind us. You just pull in and it'll tell you, there's a big sign here that says no camping one side near the lake and there's like a little wreck shed there. Um, and then this side, you just have at it, mate. Pull in somewhere. There's been a couple of fire pits and that around, but I'm pretty sure it's probably fire ban at the moment. It's pretty hot. And there you go. This is the Lake Indanara. I think that's how you say it. Little campsite, I like it, eh? Big silo there, a couple of trees, no one around. And then come over here and check out the lake. Look at this. There you go. I like it. You can if you want, Rue. That's pretty cool. There's like a big deep hole out in the middle there. That's nice, eh? It's getting pretty hot now. You going for a swim, Rue? I don't want to get bitten on the foot by a mud crab. Hi, dear. Hi. <laughs> so this is going to be something new that we're going to start. Uh, normally, throughout our vids over the years, whenever we do cooking and stuff, you see me on the campfire or me on the barbecue cooking, right? Well, Beck always feels left out. Oh, She's I like, do, I really want to help, but I want I want to cook some stuff I to show her on how to cook. And if you've been following along, well, after she finished her uni degree, uh, we got one of these. Have you ever seen one of these? A thermi. Now, how thermi. many people over the last few years on the road have said, get, get a, thermi a thermix? Mix. Yeah. And we're like, heaps. Heaps and heaps. People anyway, are traveling with them. You know, I'm just going to show you quickly. We're in a, in a free camp in the bush here. So we're running this all off the inverter. Mm. They only pull about 1500 watts at the most. So our 3000 watt, I can smash it. But um, first attempt at cooking oh, in the thermi. I can see why you have a thermi consultant. Yeah, yes. well, we're it's just getting our heads around yeah. it. But um, the thing that's hurting us at the moment is that we don't have um, an internet connection strong enough to to link it up so we have to sort of do everything manually normally mm. this little thing here you just log in and it, it actually walks you through step by step how to make everything so anyway we'll get to that point we will get there mm. but what are we going to cook dear we're just going to do a chicken coconut curry there you go so, so we're sort tasty of tasty as but we're half adapting we're, we're going to follow the recipe as much as we can mm. but then just fudge the rest of it yeah pretty much it's our first <laughs> attempt and it's going to be a shambles which is fine 20 minutes later, mate. Finished we've, product. We've got curry. What we've do you reckon? Got, I'm, yeah, I'm yet to taste it. I think it's, it looks really nice, it though. It smells I'm not, damn I'm delicious. Yeah. So what we've done, we've um, just chucked some rice in for the kids because I'm not sure if they'll like the cauliflower rice. Yeah. But I know we're going to sell them Oh, it looks good. God, it smells good. No, it does smell nice. I'm so excited to eat it. Yeah, a bit of, a bit of coriander. Look at this, ready? Mm -hmm. Done. Can the kids all it's like Jamie Oliver style. What do you reckon of this, Jacko? Oh, that looks good. Now? You can dead set eat it now. Here, I jump up. Okay, wow, that looks good. One there, one there. Bit of cosa? Yeah, ready? That's orange. Wow. That's how you do it. Get into it, Rue. Well done, dear. Oh, I'd like to give you a high five, I reckon. Yeah, it's thanks. It really should be nice. nice. I'm excited to like play around with it. Be good. Hey. Hello. 
Where do you reckon we've ended up today? We're in the Barossa Valley we in are. a little town called Greenock, mate. Greenock. Look, check this out. Spin around. This is the Greenock Centenary Park, and you can camp here. And it's um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's donation only. Oof. But we'll see how we go because we thought the one at Maricourt was free and it cost us 18 bucks. So. <laughs> We will see how we go. It's all good. But there's a couple other vans parked up the back here. It's actually really and nice. I'll tell you what, hot tip, if you're looking to do a wine tour while you're in the Parossa, I reckon this would be perfect. This is literally probably not even five minutes from like our favorite wine, Whistler Wines. Just, just, we just, just drove, drove past, past it. it. We missed it because we we're like, where is it? And then we went oh, past the entry. So, and you can't turn around. But, um, oh, it's a playground. This is grouse. Come on. Anyway, we'll find a little spot and we'll get out and show you around. We've got heat to wash and we need to hang out. We should have organised a wine tour. Well, oh, we've got all the time in the world, I know. Mate. And we even know the winemaker from Whistler, so yeah. he, he lives in town. I'm sure he could hook us up with some sort of idea. Anyway, yeah. I like this. This is yes, bloody great. good. Dinner's on. Rui, you're gonna look after them snags for me, mate. Beauty. Kids are over here, they found a mate. The playground over the other side. Hey, how was the playground? Was it good? It's good. <laughs> Give us a look. Oh, no, you're lucky. Dad turned it down for you. He'll be sweet. Give him a spin, bro. Look at this hottie, what's going on? I'm just grabbing a coffee. Apparently it's really nice coffee at this Al Estarco. I think that's how we Somewhere. say it. Just outside where we're staying anyway. We'll grab a coffee and we'll let everyone know what this place was like. Yeah. Well, thank you, my love. Yeah, I think this looks bloody nice, doesn't it? Things I do for you. Oh. Hey, I'm such anyway, a but if you're coming through Greenock in the Barossa El Estarco. El Estanco. El Estanco, sorry. Doesn't sound like I haven't it. had the coffee yet, <laughs> but um yeah. it's just a really it's nice. Yeah, really cool place. Like yeah. um yeah. Go in there and have a feed. We are going to go out for brekkie this morning, we didn't make it. It's just got a good vibe. Yeah, it's good vibe and apparently there are really good pizzas in there. Yeah. But anyway, um, we're off today. We're going to, it's 2 hours and 43 minutes down to Point Turton. But honestly, get into that, the Greenock, um, what's it called? Centennial Park. Because it's, yeah, Centennial Park. But there's a cricket field there. There's a basketball court. There's a playground. There's a dump point. Um, there's heaps of shady areas. There's, it's just, Epic. I and really liked it. It was a donation of five bucks per vehicle. So how good's that? And you can stay for seven days if you want. Uh, you just got to be self-contained. So make sure you have a grey water tank. Like we said, it's getting harder and harder mm. not to have a grey water tank. That's the second time we've used ours, but it was bloody handy to have last yeah. night. So um, I like it. Beautiful little town, Greenock. And it'll be perfect to base yourself and go looking around a few of the wineries in yeah. the Barossa. So, yep. there you go. And Whistler's only a few k's down the road if you want to go. That's my favourite We'd line. be going there, yeah. But with a week worth of 35 oh, plus, we... we are hitting the coast and we are pumped. We, we literally haven't had amazing, beautiful sunshine for months. All summer. We haven't had a summer. Yeah, yeah summer's been terrible down here, in, all down in Vic. So, yeah, we're keen as just to... Punch it. Yep. All right. We'll see you in Point Turton. Actually... I'm going to wrap that up. That'll be the end of this episode. Oh. Next time, we'll kick it off in the York Peninsula. Oh. And you'll show you what we get up to down there. Oh, I'm, actually, I'm, really I'm actually going to catch some fish. Can you believe it? He I actually am. is. I am. I actually am. <laughs> right, I'll see you guys. Comments, questions, feedback. Drop them in below. Uh, we love your work. Thanks for watching. Hey, see ya. So see you, kids. See ya. See ya, Point Turton. Oh, oh. oh God. Where'd you get that from? Not me. <laughs>